Hello and welcome to my third video on the chemistry of life and what I'll be talking about today are macromolecules. So those four examples of macromolecules include carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. So let's start with carbohydrates. Alright, so the first group is carbohydrates and as I go through these what you'll find is that I give you four topics for each of the macromolecules. Um, so on this slide you'll see elements and the monomer, and then on the next slide it will be what the function of that macromolecule is and some examples. So to start off, carbohydrates have three elements, uh, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And the monomer for a carbohydrate is called a monosaccharide. So a monomer stands for um, the smallest unit of a macromolecule. So the smallest unit of a carbohydrate is a monosaccharide and it looks like this picture down here. So you can see the oxygens and the hydrogens uh, and then where the numbers are like the one here and the two that space that it's near like where the angles meet on the lines those are carbons. So in this case um, there are six carbons um, 12 hydrogens and 6 oxygens. So you could write that as C6H12O6. And what you'll find specifically for carbohydrates is that they have a ratio of 1 to 2 to 1. So for every 1 carbon, you'll have 2 hydrogens and 1 oxygen. So a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio. All right, let's look at the function and some examples of carbohydrates. All right, so the function of carbohydrates is a quick source of energy. So when you are hungry and you need energy, um, the primary place that you're going to get it from will be carbohydrates. Some examples of carbohydrates include sugar, uh, bread, pasta, and vegetables. And so pictured here, this molecular diagram here is a picture of sucrose, which is also known as table sugar. Um, and you can see it's two um, glucose molecules stuck together. Uh, and then down below, I have some pictures of sugar right here, or equal um, splenda, that kind of thing. Uh, and then the other pictures, bread, grains, pasta, vegetables. Um, so there we go. Next up is lipids. So with lipids, uh, there are, again, three elements, same as carbohydrates, carbon, hydrogen, and some oxygen this time. Um, there's not very much. Um, and what you'll see, the monomer is actually made up of two parts, um, a glycerol and then three fatty acids. And so right here, this section of the lipid right here, oops, go over a little bit, is um, called the glycerol. And then each of these ones that extend out, these are the fatty acid, called fatty acid chains. Um, and so these CH2, 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 they can go on for 20, 30, 50 times. Um, so that's what this red section in here is for. It's, it's saying that they can extend for quite a long time. So next up, function and examples. Alright, so the function of lipids is to store energy for long-term use. Uh, and so actually what can happen is when you eat carbohydrates, which are short-term energy, if you don't use that energy, um, it can get saved for later. And the way that your body does that is to change it into a lipid. Uh, so some examples here include fats, oils, waxes, uh, and steroids. And so a picture down the bottom here is a picture, I think, of a lamb steak or something there. Um, and you can see the white part, and that is fat, and something different between the fat here and the oil over here is that the fat is solid and the oil is liquid. Uh, and so but the bonds between the carbons on the hydrocarbon chain, on the fatty acid chain, 
um, here are going to be what's known as saturated. So these are saturated carbon bonds, saturated. Um, and that allows for the carbons to be really, really close together uh, and make the material solid, as opposed to oils, which are unsaturated. So un means not, and they're not saturated. So these are unsaturated bonds. Oh, that's really bad writing. All right, uh, unsaturated. Um, these both have the common structure of a glycerol and three fatty acids, um, as do waxes. I didn't put a picture of waxes up there. Um, the last group, steroids, are down on the bottom here, um, and they have an odd shape, if you think of lipids, because they have ring structures. So you can see um, six carbon ring here, connected to a six carbon ring here, connected to a another six carbon ring, and then a five carbon ring. Um, and interesting with this little picture, the picture on the left is testosterone, which is a male hormone. Um, and then if you change it just a little bit, it's very similar to estradiol, which is a hormone found in females. So the difference between males and females on the steroid level, at least for testosterone and estrogen or estradiol, uh, is very, they're very close in structure. So next up will be proteins. All right, so proteins have five elements. Uh, those include carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and sulfur. And the monomer of a protein is called an amino acid. Uh, all amino acids have a general structure. They have uh, a central carbon right here in the middle, um, also called an alpha carbon, so the Greek letter alpha. Um, they have attached to that central carbon are a hydrogen, an amine group, so NH2 stands for amine, amine, and then um, the COOH on the right hand side is uh, carboxylic acid. So I'm just going to shorthand this carboxylic, carbox uh, acid. And so hence the name amino acid, right? Amine acid. So those two parts. Uh, and then there are 20 known amino acids that are important for living things. Um, and they all have the same structure, the hydrogen, the amine, the carboxylic acid, except for this R group right here. Um, and you can see those in the picture to the right. And so, for example, isoleucine right here in the middle, this one here, and right? it's got an amine group, it's got a carboxylic acid, it's got a carbon in the center, um, the hydrogen is not shown, and then you have the R group sticking up. So that's a, a C, two, three, four carbons and a bunch of hydrogens. Um, and they all have that same structure with the NH2 on the left and the COOH on the right. Um, and you've got 20 of them and they have different properties. So we'll get into those in a minute. All right, so proteins are found pretty much everywhere in your body, um, and they do a whole lot of things, so that's why the function section here is so big. Um, they form bone and muscles, so your bones and your muscles are made out of proteins. Um, they transport substances into and out of cells. We'll get into that a little later when we talk about uh, membranes. Um, they control cell processes, so helping cells grow, when to stop growing. Um, they help fight disease and they control the rate of reactions, how fast chemical reactions happen in your body. Uh, and so some examples of proteins include bones, like I said earlier, bones and muscles, uh, and enzymes. And so this picture here is an enzyme called catalase. Uh, and we will actually be doing a lab with this. Um, so this is a molecule that helps break down hydrogen peroxide in your body. 
Uh, and then the other picture shows bones and muscles. I'm going to go into a little more detail on um, enzymes on the next slide and in the next presentation. So let's get into that. Alright, so here's another picture of an enzyme. Um, in this case, this is hemoglobin, which is found in your blood, um, and it helps to carry oxygen, hemoglobin, helps to carry oxygen um, to the cells in your body. Um, and proteins have uh, four levels of structure to them. They have um, a primary structure, uh, a secondary structure, a tertiary structure, and a, that's a, like a degree sign, and then a quaternary structure. Um, and so the primary structure is the amino acids. What's the order of the amino acids? Um, the secondary structure is what causes some of these like ribbon shapes to kind of swirl around, um, twirl, it gives it a shape. Um, and so those are known as alpha helices, fancy name, alpha helices. Um, and if we're talking sometimes found in plants, um, you'll have uh, beta pleated sheets. Um, but animals primarily have uh, alpha helices. All right, uh, the next one is um, tertiary structure, and these are those R groups, the, the different groups that are found on the amino acids, how they interact. Um, so this has to do with the R groups. And then um, the quaternary structure is when you have um, chains of amino acids, and instead of just one chain of, of amino acids, you have more than one. So this is more than one chain of amino acids. More than one, more than one chain. Um, and in this case, hemoglobin has four chains. So they're kind of broken up by quadrant. You've got like one here, you've got another one up, oops, up. Yeah, if I can find out where I'm going here. One another one up here, um, another one there, and another one there. And so oxygen is carried in each of those four quadrants. So one hemoglobin can carry four oxygen molecules. All right, last one up is uh, nucleic acids. All right, the last group are nucleic acids. Uh, and the elements found in nucleic acids include carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus. Um, the monomer is what's called a nucleotide, uh, and there are three parts. There's a phosphate group here, a sugar here, and then a nitrogenous base over here. Um, and you can see it kind of blown up as they're linked together uh, in the diagram to the right. And so the sugar is bound to the the phosphate, and it goes sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, all the way down. Um, and then the nitrogenous bases are in the center. Um, and that's a picture of DNA. So let me go into a couple more examples on the next slide. All right, so the function of uh, nucleic acids is to store genetic information. Uh, and so this is directions on how to make your cells do what they're supposed to do and what you pass on to your offspring, so your sons or daughters. Uh, some examples of nucleic acids include DNA, RNA, and ATP. And so this middle section here, this is DNA, double-stranded. Um, it's got the sugars and the phosphates in the black and the other, the nitrogenous bases in the middle. Um, and so it kind of spins around and is has a shape of what's called a double helix. Um, RNA, very similar to DNA, only it's single-stranded. And the other difference is that one of the nitrogenous bases is different. In RNA, it's a uracil, and in DNA, it's thymine. And the last example is ATP, which is this one over here. And this is uh, used for energy. So when your body needs to do work, um, it makes this molecule. All right, I hope that was helpful, and I will see you tomorrow.